we saved the best for last, and this is a line set leak. This is the most difficult to find, the most difficult to fix, and the one that I hate and dread the most. Now, the line set simply refrigerant lines connecting the outdoor unit to the indoor unit and the indoor unit back to the outdoor unit. Those line sets are going to be hidden most likely in a wall or in a ceiling in some kind of cavity that's not easy to access. So when we're going to be checking these, one of the things we can do is we can take our leak detector, find the insulation for the suction line, and we can put that leak detector sensor up inside that insulation. And sometimes we can get lucky and we can pick up a leak. When the refrigerant starts leaking out, it starts traveling in both directions. So if we're checking it from the outside or we're checking it from the inside, we can sometimes pick up those refrigerant leaks. Now it's certainly very far from being foolproof. If you have a very small leak, it's not going to pick it up. And also, if they didn't tape the insulation together, you could be leaking that refrigerant out of every one of the joints from that insulation. And also, it's not going to pick up any leak on the liquid line whatsoever, so it's going to be very difficult to find that. In other cases, you have it where line sets run underneath the house. And if they run underneath the house, they're supposed to be in a chase, which is a plastic PVC chase from the run-in. And we can simply run the new refrigerant lines inside that chase, but even more importantly, we can take our leak detector, put it up inside that chase, and we can smell if we have any refrigerant leaks. However, not everybody follows the rules, so some of those scenarios, the concrete guy poured the concrete straight on top of the refrigerant lines, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it in that case. So the thing is, how do we find the leak? How do we know if the leak's under the slab? How do we know if the leak's in the wall? How do we know if the leak's in the attic? There are some things we can do, and it's not fun. One of the things is we take all the refrigerant out of the system, and we isolate the line set. We take the line set loose with the condenser. We take the line set loose with the evaporator, and we purge the line sets, and then we pressurize them with pure, clean nitrogen. Nitrogen. And then from there, we use our temperature pressure app, whether it's the HVAC school app or the MeasureQuick app. We want to hold it for at least an hour and see as the temperature changes, what does the pressure do? And if the temperature and pressure change together, we know that we don't have a leak in those line sets. And that's great, right? We don't want to have leaks in the line sets. But you got to spend time. If you just do a 15-minute test, it's not going to be long enough to see if you have that leak. So having it test for a certain amount of time is great. Now, if you're testing just the line sets, you can go way higher than the pressure rating on the condensing unit or the evaporator cool. You can go up to like 400 PSI. It should be able to handle that. So you can be able to hear if you have a leak, and you can also see that temperature pressure change a lot quicker. But using the app, temperature pressure compensation, you can find if you have a leak. Next question is, how are we going to fix the leak if we know for sure now that there's one in those line sets? And it depends on the application. If we have that PVC line set, we can simply pull the old refrigerant lines out, and then we can push new refrigerant lines in, making sure that we seal it, making sure that we're not getting any dirt or contaminants in there. It's a two-person job at least, maybe even a three-person job. It's not fun at all, but it is usually doable. We can run new refrigerant lines in, soft copper, not a problem. On other scenarios, it gets a lot more challenging. Most of them run in the walls. Well, in that scenario, we have two options. One of the options is we can listen for a leak inside, and if we hear a leak, we can start cutting a hole in the wall. With the customer's permission, of course, we start cutting a hole in the wall, and sometimes you have to tear up all of the sheetrock inside where that refrigerant line runs to be able to find where those leaks are. And those refrigerant leaks can be something as simple as the customer putting a long nail in the wall to hang a picture. That nail hits the refrigerant line, boom, you have a leak. Now, those are usually pretty easy to find because you can hear it, you can smell it, uh, so those you can know exactly where to cut into, fix the leak, have a sheetrock person come back and repair it, repaint it, and you're up and running good to go. On other scenarios where we can't get into that wall at all, we have to run a new line set. And most of the time what that means is we have to run the line set, the refrigerant lines on the outside of a wall. So we run them up of the wall and then we go into the attic or back into the house at the peak of that. Now the problem with that is now you have exposed refrigerant lines, the sun shining on that line. So we have to cover that up. And we certainly want these ugly line sets exposed on the side of the house. So they make tons of different ways to cover them up. It's called line set covers. They make PVC ones, plastic ones. You can get custom metal ones made. We want to make sure that we cover that line set up and protect it. So it's not a fun thing to do, especially on a two-story house, but sometimes those are things we have to handle. So now that we get the new line sets run, hey, we're back in business. The other thing to look for is the weather. If we have a big hailstorm coming through and they're going to be re-roofing a whole lot of houses, there's a much higher chance for us to have refrigerant leaks because a lot of these refrigerant lines run up the wall and then they actually go from the wall into the attic space. Well, where you have your wall and your attic space meet, it's very close for the refrigerant lines to touch. Now, some companies put their refrigerant lines right up against the roof, and these refrigerant lines should never touch the roof themselves. In that scenario where your refrigerant lines are touching the roof itself, it's going to be the installer's fault. What the installer needs to do, if you have no other choice, and this has to absolutely touch the roof deck, is you just put a piece of steel between the refrigerant line and the roof. So they go to put a nail in, it pops back up, and it doesn't puncture those refrigerant lines. That's one scenario. 
Another scenario is having to fix that leak. So fixing that leak is going to be very problematic. Now we think about having to crawl up in the tightest part of the attic where that leak is going to be. Now you crawl all the way back up in there and now you're surrounded by wood, you're in a very tight area and you have your torch out trying to fix the leak. It's very dangerous. You could have a fire, you could have the fire take out the house, take you out. So it's very dangerous. You need to have other people with you, fire extinguishers ready. It's a very dangerous situation. What I prefer to do is have the roofer come back. They'll take the roof section off where that leak is, cut a hole in the roof. We can get in there. We can fix it from the outside. They can patch it back and we're good to go. And another scenario can actually be the roofer's fault. Let's look at a scenario where you have a hailstorm come through and they're re-roofing houses all over the city. Well, if you think about supply and demand, you have a very small supply and a very heavy demand. They want to get in and get that roof done, but they can't get the right size nails they need. So they get the longer nails. Well, now they're going through and they're re-roofing that house. They put these really long nails in, excessively long, and that long nail goes right through the roof and then right into the refrigerant lines that were not touching the roof. In that case, it falls onto the roofer, but the repairs are still going to be the same. Either you got to crawl in there at the high risk safety factor, or you get that roofer to cut that hole in, you fix it, and then they go and patch that all back up. Either way, it's certainly not a fun scenario. Keep those in mind when you're doing your leak search and your leak repair. You got to think about how can we run the refrigerant lines. Back in the old days, we used to run new refrigerant lines all the time. Nowadays, because the price of copper has gone up and everything really has gone up, a lot of companies try to reuse those refrigerant lines. As long as they're sized properly and they're in good shape, it's really not an issue. But the problem is you don't know what the condition of that refrigerant line is. How old is it? 30 years ago, did they install it right? Is there a kink in there? We don't know exactly what's going on with those refrigerant lines. So when possible, we like to run new refrigerant lines. But a lot of cases, it's just absolutely not possible at all. There's just no way of doing it. Maybe it's a neighbor's, maybe it's city code. There's lots of things that can make it where we can't run new refrigerant lines. And we simply have no choice. We must reuse those lines. In that case, we're going to have to cut holes in walls and fix it the best we can and move on. But if you are running new refrigerant lines, you want to make sure that you run these refrigerant lines as one piece as possible. Make it nice, slow, soft bends everywhere you go. So that way there's no kinks in the line and you don't have to worry about any brace connections. Those brace connections are likely to fail, likely have to be fixed. So not having any kinks, not having any brace connections from point A to point B is your goal. So when you run those new refrigerant lines, that way the next person doesn't have to worry about those problems. And also you're less likely to have any leaks in the future. Even if you're really good at brazing, Brazing in a very tight area up against the wall, it can be difficult. You don't see that leak. It's holding right now. A year from now, two years from now, it ends up leaking, and then now you're back to a square one where you were before. So that's the residential aspect of it. But think about commercial buildings where you have big industrial buildings. It's even more difficult to get some of those line sets. Or also if you think about food service, restaurant equipment, or walk-in freezers and coolers. Some of the commercial buildings I've worked on, there's piping everywhere. We had one scenario in New York where they had tons of refrigerant piping everywhere and the guy that installed it did everything with soft solder. Now I know there's a lot of people that absolutely love soft solder and that's fine. You have no problems doing it, but most of the time I see soft solder done incorrectly. And soft solder factually does not handle vibration as well as brazing. Soft solder can theoretically handle higher pressure, but it doesn't handle the vibrations as well. So this system had probably 20 different refrigerant connections all the way from point A to point B, and almost every single one of those was leaking refrigerant. So having to go back through and replace those, we ended up having to put a whole new line set in, and it's very difficult going back and fixing that later. When it's new, there's nothing around. You get a scissor left, you go through, but now that system's been installed and they've changed the building multiple times, there's stuff in the way everywhere, there's no place to get your ladder in, it's absolutely a nightmare having to do that. So think about refrigerant line sets. If you're an installer, make sure those line sets are done for the long haul. You're doing it to the absolute best of your condition. Because I can replace the condensing coil. I can fix a leak in the condensing coil. We can even fix leaks in the evaporator coil, but fixing leaks in line sets are the most difficult. So if you're an installing, starting out installer, replacing line sets, make sure those line sets are done the best and have the most pride and quality in it because that could be there for multiple, multiple years and multiple systems. You could have three or four systems on that same existing line set. So those line sets, extremely, extremely important. Now, hopefully you'll go your entire career without having to have a leaking line set. But if you do, now you know some of the basic steps to find those leaks. And there's a whole lot more information to have it covered. There's scenario after scenario after scenario. But if you understand the basic theory about it, you can think outside the box and you can solve the problems. That's really what it's about. We're solving problems. We're making money. We're technicians. We're able to work with our hands. We're able to think mathematically through the equipment, through wiring, through electrons, the refrigerant flow. And if you understand how the system works, how it's supposed to work, there's nothing you can't fix.